Hello, I'm Pam Hoffman, Everyday Spacer. I'm Jeff Miller, 2049 Outfitters. At Everyday Spacer, we show regular folks how to personally and directly participate in space exploration, science, and astronomy. We're here on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, 12 minutes Eastern Time. And which one will I pick? 12 noon on Saturday in Hong Kong. We're broadcasting live from Thousand Oaks, California. Thank you so much for joining us. Tonight's topic, images of James Webb Space Telescope. We'll be back in 8.3 seconds. We were hoping to have Neil Simmons tonight with us as our guest. He is still sorting out the tech, however, so perhaps we will have him back at another time. After decades being built, the James Webb Space Telescope was a much anticipated and sometimes maligned remote sensor. As the new media darling, oh, hey, Scott. Um, as the new media darling, it is sending back data which is being turned into astonishing visual images. Jeff and I actually saw the telescope when it was in the area being worked on at Northrop Grumman. And while we were getting the tour and hearing what was, you know, what was supposed to do and where it was supposed to go and what was supposed to happen, I felt like it was a worthwhile investment. I mean, we spend decades raising a child not knowing what will happen when she comes of age. We do our best and then send her out. And that's what we did <laughs> with the James Webb Space Telescope. Yeah, we just hope it doesn't come back home knocked up. You gonna say your next line too? Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're both at we were both at Northrop Grumman twice. Yeah, once we got to go together, and then one time I couldn't make it, and then one time he couldn't make it. So yeah, so we got to see it at different stages of put together. Yeah. Um. Well, also, oh hey, Anthony. Hi, Anthony. Welcome. Glad you both are here. Um. Okay. I, I don't know what that says. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that what that, what that means. Um, it could be, you know, translation, or <laughs> maybe get, find your home keys. Um, but um, we'll also be showing some images from the James Webb Space Telescope, and oddly enough, not all of them are on the NASA site. Ah, there it is. Hello. Ah. Hello. <laughs> Was that Greek before the milk? <laughs> um, um. So we'll. Yeah, so not all of the images are on the... Oh, hi, hi Deborah. Oh, do you know Deborah? No. Hello. But she's yes. there, so I said hi. <laughs> Thought I would be polite. You acted like you knew her. <laughs> no. I'm just polite. Yes, dear. Are oh. you finishing? You going to finish your no, line? No, <laughs> I'm busy being polite. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, since not all of those um, images are on the NASA site, we'll be cruising other... Um, websites and articles. And we do want to mention that, because uh, it kind of comes up sometimes, there is a correlation between distance away and time. For example, the sun is eight light minutes and a bit away. So we don't see the sun as it is right the second. We see it as it was eight minutes plus ago. And something that is one light year in distance is also um you know as the object appeared one year ago so there's this you know basic correlation for everything yeah yeah so the further something away is the further back in time we're seeing it and by looking at galaxies both near far and in between we can see the evolution of the galaxies so cool all right we got a couple more people here hello hey, daniel. daniel all right yay thousand earths <laughs> i don't know thousand what you mean Oaks, by that. i think oh it says thousand earths <laughs> All right, so uh, we do have, you ready to share share the screen? Sure. All right, Jeff uh, is going to help us through all these, starting here. Yeah, well, let me get it. Oh, and one, one of the things, oh, and this is just, this is the NASA um, James Webb um, site. It's basically JWST, NASA.gov, and then the rest of it will fill in itself. Oh, hey, Tex. Hi, Tex. And hi, Cliff. Hi, Cliff. Oh, still raining. I'm sorry. Thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate you being here. Well, Cliff, at least you can see images <laughs> taken by a telescope that's above the rain. <laughs> by a lot. Yeah, way above the rain. <laughs> yeah. So we'll start off at the NASA website. Um, it's got some good images showing us what 
one of the things that the James Webb can do. This is a Hubble image, and this is a James Webb image. Since James Webb is near infrared, infrared goes through dust better than visible mm -hmm. light. So yeah. a lot of this dust, um, these dust clouds that obscure stuff, although really neat to see, in fact, it's, I think being able to see the dust gives us an idea of the structure, but we can also see stars behind it. I mean, all of, all of these stars would have been ex obscured and there are probably a lot of galaxies back there too. Yep. Um, would be obscured. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Cliff. Um, so we're, there's more images to come. Overview. Um, oh, can you plus that one? Because that was, see this big thing here, this infrared wavelength chart? Something very, very similar was on the, like when you go and see these things, and I'll come back to us for a second. When you go and see these things, there's generally like a gallery that you can stand in and you can look down on the clean room, which is what we did in this case. And also NASA has a place for that too. Um, but we saw this thing, uh, something very, very similar to it on the wall of that gallery. So we understood where James Webb was going to kind of fall on the wavelength spectrum. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it wasn't this image, it was something very, it was similar. very, very similar. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they had SWIFT to look for gamma rays, RXTE for X-rays, um, Hubble um, for I think visible, it's visible light, and uh, another one I heard about it. Well, there was a little bit of, little bit of um, infrared and a little bit of gamma or ultraviolet in there. Um, okay. But um, we're missing like a big chunk of ultraviolet, but I, I don't know if they care that much. James well, maybe Webb. they'll maybe they'll be yeah. you know something built to, to yeah. do that. James Webb um, looks at the infrared. Um, WMAP um, looked at microwaves, um, which is way far back. Um, mm. And then we've got, of course, got radio telescopes, which are perfectly fine on the ground because the atmosphere yeah. doesn't do diddly to those. Right, they're land based, and that's why they wanted to get so far away was because infrared kind of gets consumed yeah. by what's in well it's generated by everything including the earth well the earth yeah the, i think it's even the moisture in the air will pre right. preclude them from coming right. down to us right to build a sensor like that right just they didn't them. want it just in orbit like hubble was they wanted it far away from the earth yeah. so that we weren't radiating all over their images yeah makes but, sense um now when i first heard about the james webb i kind of didn't see the point of Ooh, let's get a heat map of things, mm -hmm. which, you know, and that image showed essentially that's what that was. It's a, essentially a, you're looking at the heat of stuff, but not only is the James Webb bigger, which we'll see in later ones, but since the farther away something is, the faster it's moving away from us, the more it red shifts. Mm. So not just being small, but some of the galaxies that are really far away, Hubble couldn't see because they were red shifted too far for it to even see. Yeah. So James Webb can show us the really far stuff in essentially the visible spectrum simply because it's looking in the red, in the infrared. Mm -hmm. And so you just translate the, you know, the colors up into visible spectrum and we've got essentially visible light images of really distant things. Well, I think most of the images that come back to us are basically data, and then right. we have to kind of crunch the numbers right. and assign color things that we can see mm -hmm. with our eyes because that's visible, you know, to any, uh, I mean, even Hubble gets processed in so mm -hmm. far as we can see it more interestingly <laughs> to yeah. us yeah. as peoples. <laughs> yeah. So another one of us, again, this is looking at the infrared here. You can make it by that one too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, plus it. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Had to get away from the heat. Yes, to see the heat. <laughs> yep. Well, in that fact, that's what a lot of the structure on the James Webb is, is blocking the heat from the sun. Right, yeah. Um, Truly an amazing, so, amazing spacecraft. So overall size, I think this is somewhat deceptive because you're not yep. seeing the true size of the heat shields. There's here. another one, though, that does a good job yeah. of that. Yeah, and this is... 
This is essentially uh, that, that, that image. That is that, yeah. Yeah, this is just that rotated. But if you look at the collecting mirror here compared to this collecting mirror, that's that's a lot more surface collection. Yes, it is. Oh, David has a comment. Let's go with that. Uh, we can see the heat that was there at about 380,000 years after the expansion of the universe. The big question is, will Webb see the afterglow of the Big Bang? No, that's in microwave. That's what the microwave um telescope showed us um so um the big, big bang happened far enough away i think that um that web can't see it mm -hmm. okay. um so but we do have a microwave um imager and up there that and that showed us that showed us that um, okay dave's got another one you ready sure uh, due to the NIR cam, uh, okay, on, on James Webb, uh, NASA will be able to explore these red-shifted galaxies and find out whether the farthest, farthest galaxies contain any evidence of the Big Bang explosion. All mm -hmm. right, so there's a subtle distinction yeah. there. Got yeah, it. and remember, there's, there's a time period when there weren't any lit up oh. <laughs> um, stars or galaxies because, you know, it took a while for stuff to condense and stars to start lighting up. So they're, um, they do talk about first light mm. and, you know, because there, there's a time between the big bang and, um, and when we actually got light from the galaxies. So, well, are they, asked, are they looking for the first star? Is that what I've heard about that, but I don't yeah. know if James Webb is supposed to I do doubt, that. I doubt that it has a resolution to see the first stars, yeah. but the first galaxies will tell us about when the first stars showed up. Mm. You know. um, and two things uh, I want to say hi to Dave. Thanks for joining us. And I, I missed one. So let me go back to this. Thanks so much, Daniel. <laughs> I didn't realize we'd gotten up to 158 uh, YouTube subscriptions. Very cool. Thanks for, thanks for breaking the news. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. So, ah, yes, yeah, so we go back to the, yeah, sure. Cause this is another really good comparison yep. for the two different mirrors. Yep. Here we go. There we go. This is a person, Hubble, James Webb. So that's a lot more collection area. Yeah, and I think thing, circles are kind of weird because they, well, anyway, <laughs> they do they do funny things with area. It's yeah. not even it's not just that it's so much bigger, but it's so much bigger around. Too. You get more pie with circles. Yeah, <laughs> got it. But um, yeah, and since each of these um, hexagons is individually um positionable mm -hmm. they don't have to regrind it just to change the focus they can right um once it got up there and cooled down now here is why i thought that the other image was deceptive in size mm. this is the heat shield and this is a tennis court they're roughly the same size um so that's that's pretty big but they stuffed that all into a rocket about the same size is what would have held um Hubble, Hubble yeah. if it had he hadn't gone on the shuttle okay and so this is the sun to the earth um the earth to um to where it lives in l2 um and Hubble is right at right here so it's 1.5 million kilometers farther away from the sun than the earth is which is actually in orbit around l2 it's not at right. l2 right it's orbiting l2 because l2 is an unstable range point basically oh and so orbiting it stabilizes but i think there's also something about getting outside of the the earth's you know so they can always right yeah it's always going to be in one position so relative to the earth so all you have to do is have have something as the earth rotates pointed toward it you know they'll know where to find it but the way the range points work is and the way i've I've thought about it is some of the stable ones and some of the unstable ones. Unstable ones are kind of like circular valleys. Mm. Things tend to roll downhill and into the center, like, you know, L4, L5. Mm. Um, the unstable ones are kind of like circular hills mm. where things want to roll downhill away from it. Mm, okay. Because I've seen those like gravitational field charts right i didn't get that out of it but it sounds like you've read up on a little yeah. bit good and by cool. orbiting 
orbiting that point, you basically stay in one position. Yeah, you're on the kind of the bottom of that mm -hmm. hill, right? Oh, and then they, okay, he's going on to more. Okay. And this show, show, you can, this show, you'll bigify that one too. Yeah, this shows that um, the range points for Earth Sun L4, L, L5 would be stable, but they'd be closer to the sun. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about lo what Lagrange is all about? These are kind of the, 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 the spots that are kind of the best to put things in. Like Right. It's where gravity basically, um, gravity of the Earth interacts with the gravity of the sun and makes these points that are, you know, um, I guess you could call it, there's fake matter here because just of the way the gravity interacts here and here um, are attraction points and these are stable points but they're they're not or they're they're attraction points but they're unstable they're kind of like like i said if you could stay at the tippy top of the hill you wouldn't go anywhere but any mm -hmm. kind of nudge mm -hmm. gets you rolling downhill i do like it here they have the that imagery of what how what james webb is doing around l2 yeah, it's yeah they show of, it orbiting yeah. the the point right um and so this is exact same image if we're looking at earth moon yeah these are these were mathematically determined by uh probably frenchman named lagrange right yeah i don't remember his first name yeah um and Okay. Ready? Cliff says, it has been shown that JWST is a big target for micrometeors with no cover. It was hit a little while ago and can't fix it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and it's probably going to meet more, but I don't think it deteriorated its effectiveness very much. But but then there's more news came in and I didn't fully understand it. We don't know the comment. You ready? Sure. So Daniel goes, uh, 1.32 meter hexagons, 4.3 feet are my new favorite building shape the size of the JWST mirror segments. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cliff, I think what it, what's going on is since you've got the individual hexagons, you know, a hit on any one hexagon doesn't affect anything else. Mm -hmm. And you've got enough collecting area that just like if there's a, if there's a bug on, on the main <laughs> mirror of your telescope, you won't necessarily note it won't necessarily affect your view too bad if it's a small enough bug you know like a gnat yeah i mean if you look at your mirror on, on uh, any old telescope if it's not sealed up you, it, it has dust on it it doesn't necessarily you know detract from its effectiveness uh yeah david respectfully disagree all right yes yeah light particles after the big bang eventually formed oh okay. he's got he expands oh, on it more than, got it than here we go Light particles after the Big Bang eventually formed. Astronomers can see the first light formed after the Big Bang. It is called the cosmic microwave background. Right. Yes. Yeah, but right. the J James Webb can't see that. That's that's why I said it's we've got something else that can yeah. see that. Yeah. It's too redshifted for James Webb to see. Um, James Webb is only going to see the stars light up, um, you know, first stars. So there's kind of two first lights, really. Um, mm -hmm. The microwave background. Um, is essentially the first light, but it's not from stars. It's from the, it's from, essentially, the particle soup expanding enough that photons can actually get out of it. And apparently, when we used to have television sets that would go off the air, that shh, that fuzzy stuff at night, that was uh, detecting the cosmic microwave microwave background. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, let's see, you got another good picture, and it can be beautiful. Well, Daniel has some. Oh, Daniel, sorry, I missed it. Uh, maybe some friendly Indians will stop by and offer to squeegee. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so here's where we go. Um, and this actually goes to David's point. Um, you know, modern telescopes can see so far here. Um HST, um, Chandra, you know, can can see about this far back before things redshift too far for them. Mm -hmm. And JWST can see here, and this is the region of the first galaxies. Okay. And I, and this is where the theoretical point where stars started lighting up, 
and they call this a dark age here. The cosmic microwave background, this is where photons escape the particle soup. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But once, once that had happened, then there wasn't any for, source of light. So there was a period of dark here. Um, and then stars started lighting up because the hydrogen and the helium started clumping up enough to light up. Yes. Okay. We do have a couple more comments. Did you want to talk more on that or should we go to the comments? Let's go to the comments. All right. So let's see. Let's talk to Cliff. Cliff says not serious to the JWST, but they thought that it would take a far larger, longer time before it would be damaged. Uh, yeah. I'll, there's stuff out there that's kind of random. And David, thanks for chiming in again. The worry is more, will the gold melted foil of the petals and will the shielding material weather the expected 10 year lifespan of JWST? Uh, yeah, I think there's a bunch of unknowns there. Yeah, um, yeah there's a lot of um, there's a lot of unknowns, but I think they kind of overbuilt just for that. Yeah, I mean, that's typical there's, of... There's several layers of the heat shield so, I mean, I think it'd have to take a lot of damage before. And all that would happen is that it would get hotter faster, which would mean that it would shorten its lifespan. So, yeah. and when they say expected lifespan of 10 years, I'm pretty sure they built it for 20. Yeah, I mean, think of all the ones that, that land on Mars and that, oh, it was supposed to last 90 days. It's been 18 years. It's a, the crazy overbuilt. All right, we got a couple more here. Uh, Daniel, are some JWST... Pointing directions, a higher impact risk, and does that factor into observation requests? I don't know anything um, about that. Do you? Well, I know one Do direction you? is a high high impact. Um, well, it's a high risk. is pointing toward the sun. Um, yes. But other than that, I think um, anything along the um, along the solar plane, you know, that the um, planets go in because most stuff is rotating around in that direction. Mm -hmm. anything, the original accretion disk. Yeah. Yeah, in, yeah. So anything in that plane is probably a higher risk. But given the fact that the JWST is a three-dimensional object, it doesn't matter really, I think, which direction yeah. you point it. I would think that the, the <laughs> risk difference is probably pretty close to negligible. I think but, we're going to learn a bunch. Yeah. A bunch. But, We'll find out, and there might be people, people who know more about that than I do. Oh, yeah, undoubtedly people know more about it. All right, so we got one from Cliff. That info was from NASA. Oh, that yeah. Oh, that the, they thought it would be a longer that, time. Yeah, before. right, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know but that they random knew. events are random, yeah. Yeah, and Dave uh, comes back with, I still tackle your prognosis, the intensity of the cosmic microwave background radiation or CMB left over from the Big Bang was much greater than it is today. Uh, yeah, basically um, as the universe expands, the same amount of radiation gets spread over a wider area, so mm -hmm. it decreases. And I think it is still expanding, right? Yeah. In fact, theoretically, it's expanding faster now than it was before. Uh, yeah, I've heard about that sort of thing, but, and I don't know if it's going to just keep on going or if it'll eventually come well, you know, come crashing back and become a big crunch. Current theory, yeah. unproven, is that th it'll just keep accelerating and accelerating okay. until even subatomic particles are pulled apart. Oh, wow. But um, that's only, it's still very theoretical and it's and taking way, far off. way far out. Yeah. Way far away. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. There is a theory that basically gets a gets away from the um, the acceleration and basically futzes with speed of light might might change. Well, we know that speed of light changes depending on the medium it's going through. Mm -hmm. Like speed of light through an atmosphere is different from the speed of light in a vacuum. And as the universe expands, the vacuum gets a harder vacuum. So is it possible that when the universe was more compressed, speed of light was slower than it is now? Maybe. I mean, you could maybe explain stuff like that, but that, again, takes people with degrees that I don't have. <laughs> All right. Should we go back to the... Sure. Okay, cool. Because that's a beautiful picture. I love that. Yeah. 
this is a combination between Webb and Herschel. Um, the orange is Webb stuff. The blue is gamma rays from Herschel. Mm, that's beautiful. So this, um, this is basically using multiple devices to show different things in a, in a nearby galaxy. Because mm -hmm. I think we learn a lot from each one. In fact, yeah. there's some Hubble and Webb pictures soon uh, in this. And I, I kind of think the, the Hubble pictures are somewhat better in some respects. In some respects, yeah. Yeah. And we'll talk about that when we get there. So. Yeah. Oh, so that's, there that's it. There's, there's more stuff here if you follow some of the links. Um, wanted to show this one because this is essentially what we saw when we were at Northrop Grumman. Yeah, we were in a gallery higher than this, uh, overlooking it. And I think at the time, well, the time I remember being there, it was over closer to that door in the kind of far right. right-ish corner. And it wasn't, they weren't playing with this part yeah. the first time I went, I think. Yeah. And our field of view yeah. was pretty much behind where the camera is and about as high as these lifts are right here. Yeah, it so was sort we were, of a weird angle. So actually. we were on the back wall looking down. All right, so we got a couple more comments. Sure you ready? Yeah, sure. Dave, thanks so much. Uh, are they calling the first images of those primordial galaxies we first saw the web deep field? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know if that they're using the deep field designation right now. Mm. You know, I think they are. I think they are. but And they do have an image of a very young galaxy, which we'll see. Yes, right. All um, right. Cliff has a comment, too. They are going to realign it so the risk is minimized in parts of its orbit in the future and will affect some points of interest. Okay, so they're okay. going to change the position so that it's not quite as prone to um, being That's damaged, right? Not, not as much of a catcher's mitt for stuff <laughs> pulling in through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let's see. Um, oh, and here's here's a good image. We've got a better copy of that later on. Mm -hmm. I think that toward the bottom here, um, these are all really good stuff. Um, oh, this might not be it. Ah, here we go. Um, Hubble's first light. Oh, this is just showing Hubble's first light image. I don't know why it's on the James Webb one. Wasn't well, that versus the James no. Webb one? No, this is ground-based versus Hubble. Oh, I see. Okay. So, don't know why it's here. It's just neat. Um, yeah, and those other pictures we're going to be... Right. Yeah, like this one. So, so this is James Webb comparison. But so This is cool. Hubble's on oh, the... Oh, well, let me get you that link, too. So you can play with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll get them all. I got them all. Let me add them to the chat for you. Which one is it on here? Is it the That's last Web one? Compare. Web Compare. All right. So here are all of the ones that you're going to see tonight. And the one that has Web Compare in it yeah. is the one that Jeff is looking at right now. Yeah. And hopefully these are clickable links. If not, I'll pull it out of there for to make it a clickable link. Yeah. So basically, and you can slide over. So this is Hubble. This is what Hubble saw. And this is what James Webb sees. Yeah, I, I think the web is almost too much. It's, it's sort of like obscure. It obfuscates some of the, the right. cool but things. You're seeing more. Couple. You're seeing more of the stars. Yeah, but so. I mean, just in the big middle, of the big, big spiral part. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, Cliff. Cliff says thank you very much, and yeah. absolutely, we we love helping you out. Yeah, but one of the things is, look at the field that isn't the galaxies. Look at the dark background there yeah. compared to yeah. all the sources of light here. Kind of pop right out. And yeah. instead of seeing just basically dots places, you actually see structure. And Ron, welcome, Ron. Glad you could be here. Yeah, yeah. these are amazing. Let me, I'm going to actually add the specific link to this exact page so you yeah. can play with it yourself. I mean, it is really tremendous to see the differences. Yeah, and this is the Ring Nebula. Them. This is Hubble's, which I kind of like the the wispy of the blue. It almost looks like a gemstone. Yeah, it's so the, beautiful. Yeah, looks like moonstone or or an opal here. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that, mm -hmm. but this is what you see from from James Webb. 
And one of the things I want to talk about here too is that some of these Hubble images uh, don't have this complete scope the same as the web images right. do. And then they kind of look like they have sort of a, it has kind of a blocky look to it, which doesn't, there's no information on the outside of, of right. the block. There's one that's very significantly obvious, mm -hmm. uh, but some of these other ones have them. It's just harder to tell. Um, Scott comes back with uh, the James Webb Space Telescope pictures. Remind me of fireworks. They are so intense. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that too. In fact, I put the um, one of the images on Facebook as my kind of big background thing, and that's exactly what I thought it looked like. It was uh, fireworks. Yeah. Okay. And again, one of the things to note is look at the stars in the background or the lack of stars in the background for Hubble yeah. and look at everything you can see, not just of the nebula, but everything else. Yeah. Galaxies here. Yeah. Uh. So amazing. Yeah. Oh, here's here's the one that's really obvious. Cause yeah. cause that yeah, see yeah. where it cuts off? That's the Hubble picture. Yeah, just this portion yeah. portion here is is what Hubble took. And then we scroll back. Now, one of the things that you notice you don't see all of the smokiness above it. Yeah. And you can see a lot more of the stars behind that smoke. And you can see a little it's much more defined structures in here. Mm-hmm. Because some of the obscuring dust is just out of the way. You, you see through it. Yeah. So just, um, what's up? Oh. Got a comment. You ready? Yeah. Okay. So uh, David comes back with, sorry, Jeff. Once the whole universe was very hot, as it grew, the heat left a glow. Big Bang Theory predicts that we should be able to detect this glow as microwave yep. light. And we, yes, and we, we have, actually. That's where the microwave background radiation map comes from. It's just that James Webb won't be able to see it. It's just too, um, the wavelength is too long for James Webb. Okay. Also, uh, David is asking, can this panel be reset to take more than a few lines at a time? I'm Are you talking about what we're sharing in the images, Dave. Um, we can adjust it some. Yeah. 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 So. But it gets hard to see things if it's too small. Yeah, we've we kind of bigified things. Yeah, we've bigified stuff so that we can. It's easiest to see, and that's why we provided the links. If you want to read up, yeah. on, you know, on it, great. I mean, we've got the links there. Because this is all about doing. Yep. So we got two pieces of this. We went, we saw, and you can too. Like if something's in your area, take an opportunity to go see it. We saw James Webb Space Telescope twice while it was here. You know, it was very cool. You, you're, you're alive and in person. You can't touch it, but you can certainly see it. And mm -hmm. these really cool websites can be something that you get to play with for yourself and make observations like, like we're, we're talking about right here. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, here's a kind of a deep field view like um, Dave was talking about from the Hubble. Nice. I mean, a lot of stuff there. Um and you see, you know, some arcing here and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it is, Cliff. <laughs> and you come over here and look at how much more you see. What I thought was so impressive was how obvious the gravitational lensing yeah, is. It's like this. it's so clear that that's what's happening here. Yeah, and multiple sources, too. Mm -hmm. Look at this one. It's just it's a galaxy that is either a really weird shaped galaxy or yeah, something's in front of it. It's probably being spread And there's out, this arc here that doesn't have a matching arc, arc. This arc here might be a match to this one. So there might be something about right here. Mm. Um, but there's so many different arcs in here that you can see that there's a lot more going on between us and those galaxies than we really know about. So Dave says, uh, yes, but sometimes a point needs a little more discussion. Absolutely. You want to do a little more discussing? We're very open to that. Yep. If, if, if Make sure you tell us, and we can go back. We can absolutely go back to where we were and take a look at what what's yeah. what's written. There. And that, maybe that's we, great. That's and fine. And maybe we look at, um, maybe we do a show talking about the cosmic background radiation. Uh, that'd be cool. Because, yeah, because that's, you know, we've got a, a various things that, that look 
look at that. Well, and, and who knows what they've learned about that we haven't read up on yet. So, yeah, yeah. We, we could talk about that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You got any more? Oh, yeah, I see one. Okay, cool. Yeah, and we've got some more stuff oh, going, too. This is amazing. So, <laughs> this is, um, what is this up here? Um, hang on. Stefan's Quintet. Um, this is Hubble. Yeah. And <laughs> you don't even really see this tail here. Well, I think this is one of those that it's not real obvious, but there is sort of a yeah, squaring you can see, off. Yeah, but, and you can, oh, yeah. Oh, the tail can, is there, but the big bright. Yeah. It go kind of, kind yeah. of stop right before yeah. the, see how it's kind of cut off. It, it, this is one of those that has a square. Yeah. Oh, David came back with, uh, let's see. With this image, you see close blue and distance red galaxies. Ah. Yep. Excellent point. Yep. Yeah, so I just... I think uh, when you say um, blue, it sounds like it's more Hubble, and red, it sounds like it may be more web. Well, even here... Appearances, right? The, Is that what you the mean, white, Dave? The white, Tell me more. Yeah, the white versus red here, even in the James Webb one, you know, things that are whiter are closer, things that are redder are farther away. Okay. But I do like how this has much, much more of the scope of this image. Yep. Than the Hubble one, yeah. so so it was a little bit deceptive, you know, like that big bright star-looking thing um, was just not. It's on, just not even yeah. on yeah. the Hubble image. Yeah, if you notice the square, the tilted square that they tilted just to line up with the hub, with the yeah. web image, and that star, yeah, is, right there, is not in that square. All right, uh, let's see. The comment comes after the previous one. Yes, I I I know what what it is is um. It's actually a delay, a delay. So uh, we'll, we'll yeah. try and accommodate. Uh, but this, just like space, you're going to have a delay. And yeah. I think it might even be. Is I it, think there's a like a 10 second. Yeah, it might even be as much delay. as 10 seconds, which seems enormous to us humans who are used to talking together. Uh -huh. uh, like, like, you know, we're sitting next to each other. Yeah. Um, so, so. Please uh, go ahead and let's see the deep field one. All right. So do you remember what that is? The deep field one? Is it on this page, Dave? There, this one. Ah, this one. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Take a look. Is at this the, the one, Dave? Yeah. Take a look at the color differences here. Yeah. Oh, I and, see. The yeah. And the redder it is, the farther away it is. Yeah. Because um, of the red shift or the. Yeah. The or, red okay. Shift. All right. Because it, it would be old, longer ago, too. Right. But. Are they different enough? in no not in composition because like mm -hmm. a really big hydrogen star is gonna look red mm -hmm. or yellow or mm -hmm. you know so um near a minute delay oh you think there's as much as a, a 60 second delay wow i thought it was closer to 10 which is still i mean if you think about it that's still significant especially when we're using computers now and everything happens so fast and yeah. You know, they talk about meteor showers like, oh, 16 hour, but that's one a minute. Yeah. And then you're 59 seconds of what? Yeah. Yeah. And we're we're very used to computers now. We're kind of spoiled. Yeah. So, yeah. Just oh, to, it's at least 30 seconds off. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, well, we will try to help you with that. And if you want us to go back, absolutely say yeah. something. And yeah, we will. just... Um, yeah, if it's not really obvious, just like you just said about going to the deep field image, uh, Dave, um, just give us a reference to yeah. when when it was. Um, yeah. But let, let's show something here. Sure. And um, David's comment um, reminded me, if you look, all of the bent galaxies are mm -hmm. red, mm. yellow, you know, orange or red. So it shows that they're the farther ones. They're the ones that mm -hmm. are more likely to be lensed because right. they're farther back away. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Because um, they're behind of, the other ones. Yeah, none of the white white or blue. I don't really see them as blue. I see them as white. But, yeah. you know, compared to red, it's I guess it's blue. But um, the white ones are, are very light yellows. None of those are really twisted at all right so it's only the red ones the ones that are farther away so that's um so yeah um thanks 
Dave, because that that puts that into perspective too. Yep. Okay, so yeah, really good point. So I wanted this one because this image was not on. Sure, Dave. <laughs> oh, and I think that's a fabulous. Go back to that. Don't don't quit. Don't go so fast. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. a fabulous that um, image. Yeah. Yes. Get out of the way. Yeah, I want to see the it's image. Got that. Yeah. But, yeah. And Did then, they say what that is? It's got a thing underneath it. Jim of Galaxy. Oh, it's NGC, the NGC number. Um, seventy four ninety six. Yeah, I don't have it memorized, so if somebody out there knows what. Yeah. What that might and be I in M that, objects. And this is what there we were is. talking about. Um, one of the first galaxies. Um, and what's interesting is I've seen a lot of these really cool pictures on like Facebook and stuff, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen that one. And it's like, but that's like the coolest one. I guess because it's <laughs> just a, a little red blob. Yeah, but... it's not real pretty, but it's like, wait, oh, I'm reading it. And I'm like, hey, wait, that's. <laughs> now, now, is this one of her? If, is this one of the first galaxies? Well, yeah, close. so far. It's, it's just the first one we've seen. Yeah. It's just right. like looking at dinosaur bones. If uh, they're the ones that you saw. Dave comes back with, you know what? Some of those distance galax distant galaxies may have achieved type 11 or type 111 status. Dave, uh, help me out. I'm not sure what you mean. Type 2 or type 3? Oh, type 2 or type 3. I see. Um... I don't know what that means to you. Yeah, no. And you know what? It, there, <laughs> what may be happening here is that because Dave is in Australia and we're in the United States, there may be a, a difference nomenclature. in yeah nomenclature that Dave means one thing and we we say it a different way. Um, so yeah, if anybody can help bridge, yeah. help us bridge that, that'd be wonderful. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure what that what that's about. Yeah, but um, yeah. So this is possibly a galaxy with all fresh stars not no stars that have supernova and oh i see formed new ones so wow that's you know possible don't know but the fact that we can see this much structure uh from something that far away yeah this is what 13 to 13 billion yeah i mean light years away when we're used to looking at hey that pixel that's like two three pixels wide that that must be you know that must be a galaxy in there uh-huh whereas this is <laughs> definitely more than a couple pixels wide so yep that's um so i just wanted to show this one. Oh this, yeah to me that was very exciting to see yeah and of course more of what we've seen before oh there's the one here here's yeah this is hubble and i think the hubble what? image there is has been around and well known for quite some time right and because here in the hubble the the blue are new new star forming regions mm -hmm. And um, and it just shows a lot more structure. Well, again, it's here. seeing through the dust, I yep. think, is the yeah. main thing that Webb mm -hmm. can do for us, is to, right. to penetrate the dust. For nearby stuff, yeah. yeah. And um, Oh, I thought this was really cool, too. <laughs> yeah. So here's, here's this nebula. Right here, this line here, zoomed up. That's a galaxy That's a that we galaxy. never knew about. Yeah. I love that. That is so cool. Yeah. So, and here is Jupiter. They took a shot of Jupiter. Now, what? Now, unless this is an artifact, looks like there's some very, you know, some transparent atmosphere here. Kind of looks above like the what Earth's, we normally see. Yeah. 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 So, this is kind of neat to me. And this Wasn't is, it the ring? This, this that, is the ring right Yeah, here. that was the sort of significant. Yeah. And you know, we're just going to keep making discoveries with this thing. Yeah. And it's it's going to be out there for. Yeah. But just who knows how long? Since this is seeing infrared, this is a heat difference. So, cold spot, hot spot. Oh. Ah, so Dave comes back with uh, explanation: Type two and Type three, the Kardashev. Scale is a method of measuring a civilization's level of technological advancement based on the amount of energy it is able to use. Yes. Um, okay. Oh, and, and Cliff goes, I think type two and, and three are the early right. first galaxies. Right. I don't know that the type two and type three in 
of the Kardashev, Kardashev, I, Kardashev. Kardashev skill is going to really apply here right. because I don't know if we've got civilizations there. Um, but, oh. Well, okay. well, well, finish what you're saying, and then I'll show Ron's comment, because okay. Ron, Ron made a comment, too. Um, because I don't know if we've got civilizations back there. That'd but, be uh, hard to say. Yeah, but that, that's okay. <laughs> we don't even know if we have other civilizations the, in our galaxy, which is, like, right here. Yeah, the card of Jeff skills something else to talk about. Yeah, I know. Own, so. I've not heard of that before. I, I have. Oh, you have. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, All right. Is that is that what you wanted to say about that? Yeah. So let's talk Okay, to Ron. Ron, he comes uh, on. Thanks so much. Uh, is that cold spot on Jupiter caused by the shadow of the moon? I was wondering about that. Let's go back to that. Um, and yeah, and I think it's by the big white area. See, see the kind of blackish? Yeah. I think that's what you're... Oh, the star-like thing is Europa. Oh, wow. Okay, Europa. And then um, do they talk about the, the kind of black spot? I think that's what you mean, Ron, the black spot next to the big white yeah. white spot, just to the uh, left of it. Yeah. Um, it's not saying, um, but it probably is. It's, I think I that's remember. That's what I thought. Yeah, I think I remember seeing that somewhere. When, I'm just not seeing it here. When I first saw that, I'm like, oh, that's that seems like it's a moon or maybe the shadow of one of the moons. Yeah. Uh, and Dave has another comment. You want to look for that and I will bring yeah. this up and read yeah. it. And all right. So Dave said these galaxies and perhaps planets around uh, may have advanced civilizations that set off to explore the universe. Could be. I mean, All right. by now that, you know, if the galaxies are still there, by now they might have. Um, yeah, this is. And and remember that. Not the, just far away, but a long time ago. Right. Too. That the early galaxies aren't necessarily any different than the galaxies that we've got. They're just less evolved. Because we're seeing farther back in time. So. You know, our galaxy might have looked somewhat like that before, um, you know, at that time period. So, you know, we don't know what they've turned into. And, and a lot of the early galaxies have impacted other galaxies or coalesced, I guess. Yeah. So there's not a lot of impact actually going on there. Space is big. Yeah. Um, yeah, another comment. Okay. Cliff says, the black spot is the shadow of the bright one. I, I thought the bright one was kind of correlated to the you know the, the big red spot on jupiter yeah. uh yes yeah. let's go well, back and take see, a look yeah you can see that there is a circular pattern there so this is um yeah i, I thought of that as the great red spot on jupiter or which, it's it's a storm like that yeah. because if remember we were hunting for those earlier yeah they they, they change over yeah. time but yeah i think i think i saw somewhere and i could i couldn't find it out while we were talking i was looking through here but I thought that I saw that this was a shadow. So I think Ronald was right that this is a shadow of a moon. Okay, David, thank you so much for coming back and pointing this out. You missed the point. These images are so old. The first galaxies may have spawned life-bearing planets around 13 billion years ago. Quite possibly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how we're ever, we would ever know. I mean. Right. I guess they're they're trying to figure out if there's some either you know biological indicators. Uh, I, I I'm part of the weekly space hangout, and when I'm uh, on the show, I definitely hear oh, the speaker. No, technological, no. biological. So they're trying to figure out if there's these markers. Yeah. But yeah, you got something. Okay, the the very early galaxies that we're seeing wouldn't have had planets. Because if they're from first burn stars, mm. there aren't heavy elements. Right, because there hasn't been a nova yet, and nova will get yeah. you to iron and. Right, so yeah, the things. stars haven't burned. Right, up, you're right. You're up right. to the heavier elements and exploded and yeah. released them yet. So right. those very early galaxies wouldn't have had, unless it's some kind of, you know life form that we don't know about i mean could be um there'd be definitely a soup of hydrogen and helium mm -hmm. that's maybe something could live in but yeah we were talking no about way. this the other day and it was like oh yeah you're right that makes total sense yeah. uh let's see europa is the star oh so you think that might be the yeah. shadow yeah from europa on jupiter i think that's what you're saying right yeah just hard <laughs> to tell i don't think it's in the right position for yeah, europa. it doesn't seem like it's quite 
I, I, I'm thinking that it's probably something on the other side of Jupiter that just is not in our field of view. And Dave has one more too. Um, the evidence will be if we detect the elements of life with further probing by Webb. Yeah. Now, okay. here's the thing. Webb, Webb has spotted exoplanets. Yeah, there was something about Trappist in there, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah, something somewhere. I didn't see no, I it. I saw it, I saw it like on that page. Oh, uh, okay. Uh you want to go back and take a look? I think it's just Up. just below the Oh yeah, uh no, it's just below the Jupiter picture. Oh okay. so, don't, don't not so fast, not so fast. Just below means like, you know, a few lines. Okay. <laughs> Isn't there yeah, Trappist, Trappist. right there. Uh, it's probing planets and other star systems too. Telescope has taken a peek at the famous Trappist One system. That's got the seven. Yeah, seven Earth-sized worlds. Um. So. So yeah, so we're looking at those. So that could be interesting. Yeah. Do you have more on that page? Um. Nope. Other things. Yeah. But you this did. is a neat this is a neat um magazine yeah. so um, and i think that's part of the the list of lists yeah it that is I one of the ones that added to the chat earlier yeah. Yeah. like that big old long list the big huge yeah. long list you have one more page right one more yeah now this is uh um james webb versus hubble basically goes through what we go went through it's someone else narrating so we gave you the link for it you know it's like two minutes long Mm -hmm. it's worth a, it's worth a look at um so and i know you might end up with <laughs> whatever you know whatever links they show you here but i saw well, you like, could spend all day on this site <laughs> yeah I, I found three or four um ones of the web web versus hubble mm. but most of them just did the same thing this one does but with just music behind them and i mm -hmm. preferred the narration Okay, now I'm pretty sure I showed this one. Uh, mm -hmm. If we just have, okay, and then Dave has one more. Oh, so these let's go back to us. Oh, okay, sure. So these uh, all important elements could have formed at the time of the Big Bang. BB being Big Bang, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, the Big I, Bang did a lot of. Yeah, the, I don't know. I, I don't know that it had. I don't. I don't know if. I don't remember anyone talking about that. No, I have. I don't remember anyone talking and about it. I think it they would have. I think they would have mentioned it if, if that was the case. But again, don't know. But well, I think that make a great research project for some PhD right. out there who's right. I think that it just takes more intense. energy density. You know, Big Bang was great, but it was actually so high energy that I don't think we had matter at the time of the Big Bang. Things had to cool off. Then we got electrons, protons. And neutrons and then they started to clump up right and yeah i think free free range yeah of those and then yeah they started to all right so dave comes back with therefore the impregnation stated at this time maybe uh well <laughs> i don't have an answer to that <laughs> yeah and i'm not sure anyone does but yeah I, it's, it's what we're here for talk yeah. about this stuff Yep. All right. Did you have anything else? Nope. That was all I had up did there. Did you have anything else? <laughs> we will continue to look for them, but we do have a little bit more in our show. So uh, let's see. Let's go over to, where is it? Here. Because you can get your free list of annual annual meteor showers at this site, meteorshowerchart.com. You just fill in the form, press the button, and that, and it will take you right over to there. All right. So let's see. Let's go back to us again. Yep. Oh, and I'm up again. <laughs> Some stellar events this week. And go ahead and answer and talk to, because I think there's more comments. Yeah. Oh, yeah. David. Um, whoops. I'm sorry. I was turning that one off. <laughs> it's crazy, you know. Comments come after y'all have moved on. Yeah. For sorry. Three or more slides. Lost the connection. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I think that. I think it's we're just getting just going to be a delay, and yeah, go I, ahead. yeah. I think it's just a bigger delay getting to Australia than it is maybe other places because because when we've talked, we've used Streamyard with other people in California. Mm -hmm. Heck, we've used Streamyard with other people on the other side of the country, and there doesn't seem to be the delay. 
No. Um, well, I know there's a delay between us speaking and broadcasting out to like YouTube and Facebook and that. Right. Uh, it's only like 10 seconds normally. Yeah. I don't even, I'm not even sure if it's 10, but it's something around there. Uh, and it just comes with the system. Now, if you're experiencing 30 to 60 seconds, yeah, that might be because, um, United States to Australia. Yeah. And I don't, yeah. I don't know how to get around that. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead with the stellar events this week. Watch for more comments. Thanks. Uh, this we're talking, um, August 5th through August the 12th on the 5th. Gosh, let's say the first quarter moon on the 10th, Pluto and the moon are in conjunction on the 11th is the full sturgeon moon. Also Saturn and the moon are in conjunction. Uh, we're back to August 12th, Friday night show. I attended an event today. I'm going to tell you about that in a little bit. So stay tuned. And that'll be my, I'll re kind of review it for next week. You can find us Fridays at 9 p.m. Pacific time on every, on the Everyday Spacer Facebook page and the Everyday Spacer YouTube channel. Also on August the 12th is the Perseid Meteor Shower. And this is like the 12th into the 13th because the Perseids, even though their date range is like July 17th to August 26th, they're, they peak August 12th into 13th after midnight. So go out on the 12th, not the 13th. <laughs> um, but the, they do radiate from Perseus, and this is a northeast. The peak rate per hour is 50 to 90. This emanates from 109P Swift Tuttle. This, that's the source, the commentary source. Unfortunately, this is just after the full moon, and there's going to be a big moon in the sky most of the night, which makes it hard to see meteor showers. Did we have more, another yes. comment? Cliff, um, text Dave and myself for Australians. Yep. Take that flat earthers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they'll find some way. To hey, justify. didn't you didn't you tell me that the water in the in the planet was not bubbly? So there you go, flat. Yeah. I, I saw that on Facebook today. I thought it was Cliff. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, logic <laughs> doesn't. There no no amount of thinking will. Logic will need not apply that. for yeah, some nothing people. fixes that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so go ahead. So other events and activities. Um, we've been tuning into Frank White's Overview Roundtable for most of this year, and we learned about some cool things the members are doing. Um, oh, text. We go round and round, yes. <laughs> um, last Wednesday, learned about um, Space Prize speaker series. What? Yeah, I just mentioned that part. Okay. Oh, I can put the YouTube link in the. Yeah, the Space Prize, which we, we've been talking about periodically, um, they have a whole speaker series. Let's see. Let me get that link to you. Hopefully that is a clickable link in the chat for you. Okay. Um, also, Space Education Symposium, November 12th, 2022, hosted by Human Space Program. That's basically Frank White's okay, yeah. program. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, the overview roundtable is every Wednesday morning and oh, okay. It's more Wednesday morning here for us. That's like 9 a.m. Pacific time Wednesday morning. And uh, it's just a fabulous group. And Frank is, kicks off things and, mm -hmm. and talks about the overview effect. And it's just been terrific to, mm -hmm. to tune into that. And I think anyone can, uh, it's just a matter of getting you on the list. Um, like now I get, I get their emails every Tuesday. So mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. Okay, the new space, the new space conference, twenty twenty two, is Wait, August twenty fourth through August twenty sixth. There, oh, there's there it the is. graphic. Yep, and looks like it's in Seattle, Washington, according to that graphic. Um, yep, yep, from Space Frontier Foundation. So, um, spacefrontier.org/newspace. Yeah, new space. Uh, their hashtag is new space twenty twenty two. Mm -hmm. um, space apps challenge. Let me find it. Um, there it is. Yep. August 1st through 2nd, um, 2022. NASA has an annual event. Um, worldwide. Yep. Worldwide. <coughs> you okay? Yep. Just. And I guess they get together and they um, have these teams and they build applications. Yeah, like it's like apps on your phone kind of yep. thing. I think I think it is. Yeah, it's basically a hackathon if you know what those are. <laughs> All right, okay, and so 
No, but that one's that one's not ready yet. We're not okay. ready for that one yet. <laughs> so if you or someone you know is interested in um, is, has done something interesting in space exploration, science, astronomy like that, we are very open to <coughs> and love to share our live. Join us again next Friday, August the 12th. I am going to report on the Science is Cool unconference that was today, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. I was there for almost all of it. And let me tell you, it was incredible. I definitely recommend that you go to this. And I think they're going to have something uh, along the lines again in November. So I'll have a link for that. But come back next week and hear about that. Because let me tell you, I can't believe as much stuff as I learned today. And I would like to tell you uh, at least some of the highlights. And they had some incredible people come on. Anyway, uh, and then you've got a new Zooniverse project you want to talk about? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Basically, it looks like on the 19th, we're, we're planning out farther ahead now. <laughs> well, we um, just got a bunch of stuff going. Yeah. So. Basically, it was going to be next week, but then Pam went to the un yeah. the Science is Cool thing. And, <laughs> and I was, was like, hey, I want to talk about that. <laughs> and she bumped me. Yeah, I bumped him. And uh, I did get someone uh, reach out to me by email and said, hey, can I be a guest on your show? I'm looking at it August 26th, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> so... I think we've got August kind of yeah. charted out so far, and uh, we love you to be here. Thank you, Cliff. I really appreciate oh, you yeah. saying <laughs> We both did. I uh, really appreciate you saying that. So glad you've been here. Cliff and Tex and Dave and Daniel is here, I know. And Scott. And Scott. Yeah. Ron, Ron, thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate that. I know we had, uh, I think, someone from the meetups earlier. Um, what's, her, what's her name? Where is it? De is it Deborah? Yeah, Deborah was on Deborah. here. Um, We're just scrolling through the chat. Yep. And Anthony. There's Anthony. Anthony. Yep. Yep, there's Deborah. Deborah and Ho Hooper and Anthony. We're yep. so excited that you're here and we're so we're so happy to, to be able to you mentioned Daniel, right? bring this to you. Yeah, I mentioned Daniel. Okay. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Thanks so much. Any more comments? Oh, yeah. We got a new one? Bash oh, Bashir. Bashir. Hi, Bashir. Yeah. <laughs> hey. yeah. Great evening. And you know, it's cool because Bashir wants to do uh, a show too. So, oh, nice. Take your inspiration wherever you can find it, buddy. Yeah. Glad you're here. Thanks for joining. Yeah. All right. I think that's going to do it for us. Uh, have a great week. And maybe we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night. Mm -hmm.